Okay. Uh, so I did, um, I did actually fill out the weekly calendar for you guys, which isn't a huge deal because I've been kind of telling you what we're doing this week anyway. Um, so I, I put the outline attached to the calendar though. So if you guys wanted to download it, you certainly could. Um, there's only going to be eight questions. This, this should be easily done within the class period. By far, the slowest question is going to be drawing the slope field. And that's not necessarily hard, it's just slow. Um, so otherwise, uh, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to be going over this together tomorrow. Um, I just figured I'd try to get it up as early as I can so that you guys could look it over if you wanted to. Um, did you guys like using those organizers? Would you like me to make an organizer out of this thing too? Okay, I, I can do that. Um, I'll try to do that this afternoon then. And then I'll, I'll probably um, attach the organizer to the weekly calendar as well. So if you guys get a chance, you can print it off and write stuff in there. Otherwise, it's the last day of the unit already. And it feels weird because this was just like lightning fast compared to the last unit. The last unit took us, I don't know, two and a half, almost three weeks. So these are still differential equations because they're derivatives. Um, and it's just exponential modeling. Uh, a ton of situations fit exponential modeling. Probably the most common is if you guys remember PERT, the P-E to the R-T. PERT was, is for money. It's exponential modeling. So here is, we're going to go over where it comes from first, and then you'll never have to, you'll never have to prove this yourself, okay? So I want to show you where it comes from. So the, the one phrase, the rate of change of y is proportional to y. And, you know, it, it basically means how fast it changes depends on how big it is type thing. That's, that's what this says. So if I write that out as a phrase, dy dt equals ky. The k has to be there because we don't know that constant. We don't know if it's double or triple or, you know, what. So the k is something you figure out. Um, Emma, there is only two unit tests, but we will have a bunch of things graded from the prep of the AP as well. I I have not gone over with Mr. Stouffer yet, like what exactly we're going to do with that. Um, but in past years, we've we've definitely always had um, AP prep have some sort of a test in it. Um, doesn't mean like the AP test itself is not part of your grade, uh, but the AP prep will be part of the grade. But we haven't decided how we want to fit that in yet. We, we partially want to see how much time we're going to have. So they'll, they'll most likely be three tests this try, just like the other tries. Um, partially because only having two tests, um, really makes your grade kind of volatile. Like, like if you do a little bit worse on one test than you wanted, um, it absolutely adjusts your grade a lot. So having a third test really helps kind of balance out your grades. Okay, um, back to this one. Um, so, oh yeah, this is how you write um, the rate of change of y is proportional to y. Uh, harder, Tridera. So, if we want to solve this, um, we have to rearrange the variables. So, separation of variables. And um, this part shouldn't be any different to you guys at this point. So you put the y's on the left, and the variable on the right is actually t this time. k represents a number, so that's kind of something you have to remember. And this is almost identical to what we did yesterday. But when you integrate 1 over y dy, it'll be ln of absolute value of y equals kt plus c. Um, for these problems, 
they're traditionally word problems. Um, y is just never going to be negative. So we don't even deal with the negative portion of this. And so this is, this is identical to the one we kind of set up yesterday. And you get basically to the end. Which one? Purple on the left? KT plus C1? Uh, it, it's, it's that. KT plus C1. I basically made both sides of the equation the power, because that's how we'll solve for y. And I, it looks like I was probably scrolling a little too fast because I saw people furiously writing. I can go back up if need be to. Like I, I didn't know what part of this you were going to write down. change colors. Basically, you end up as this as the general solution. So anytime you have an exponential um, differential equation, no. How was it phrased? Exponential functions from differential equations? Exponential modeling, something like that. If you have some sort of situation that um, can be modeled by exponential functions. CE to the KT is a super generic equation where C is a constant and K is a constant. So these problems require you to know two different things to be able to solve them. Uh, here it is. Basically, this is your takeaway. If you are some way or form told that the derivative, the rate of change, is proportional to the original, then y equals ce to the kt would be the general solution for that situation. Now, I'm just going to flat out tell you every single problem today fits this situation. And a majority, no, nope, I won't say that. There will usually be a sentence at the beginning of the problem that tells you it is this style problem. And it will be something along the lines of something is proportional to the original thing. It'll, it'll generally have that sentence at the beginning. And that's going to be your key wording to know that it's, oh, I'm still on the highlighter. That'll be your key wording to know that it's this type of problem. Okay, and you guys don't have to do this today. Like, this isn't part of your work. I was just showing you where it came from. But this is the big takeaway. So if you're going to highlight or star anything, it would, should be this. Okay, so the first problem style. <clears throat> I'm putting these in the notes because I thought they were awfully confusing when I first looked at them. And uh, if you're writing this in your own notes, this is basically all you have to put in your notes. You don't have to put the multiple choice part. I left the multiple choice part up there for you guys just because... You're told f prime is negative 5 times f of x, and f of 0 equals 4. Solve the equation. Like, uh, to me, that doesn't feel like it says much at all, because it just, two little things. And you're supposed to somehow be able to figure that out. Can you explain, Daniel? Uh, sure, give it a shot. 
and then I can I can back it up if need be. You you haven't even said the first step yet. <laughs> You're not wrong, but you're going to do way too much work. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong, but I, um, you don't have to do that at all. Yep. It, yeah, I mean, like you still would end up with the same correct answer for sure. Um, so right here, where it says y prime equals ky, the derivative is equal to some number times the original. And that's what this says. The derivative is equal to some number times the original. <clears throat> this right here tells us right away that k is 5. So this is a horrible, horrible way for you to be told that this is going to be an exponential modeling function. This first sentence, even though it's ridiculously short and says zero words, actually tells us that it models this. And that's why I wanted to include these problems. Because the, the presentation of the problem to me is atrocious. <clears throat> we immediately know that k is negative 5. Because we were essentially told the multiplier to begin with. And that's partially why they look confusing. So we can put that in right away. And then once you know k, c is the only constant left to find. So we're told f of 0 equals 4. That tells you 0. Yeah, that's that's 0 right there. Oh, no, no, t is like x. It's It's the variable. It's the independent variable. Like, x stays in most functions. So, 0 goes in place of t. I think I said x out loud. And then the answer is 4. Well, e to the negative 5 times 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So, c is 4. So then you get 4 e to the negative 5t. Oh, yeah, the original problem used an x. Sorry. That was my fault. This should have been an x instead of a t, but that doesn't matter. Um, sure, what thing with the t? Um, I think you mean right here? Oh, so I, I put 0 in place of t because that's the variable. So like when it says f of 0 equals 4. Okay. Absolutely. I mean, like, ask away. So, Daniel, I'm, I'm assuming you kind of see right now, like the way you were doing it would have been perfectly correct. It was just going to be a lot more steps. A hundred percent, these questions are super easy once you figure out what you're supposed to do with them. They are crazy hard if you wouldn't know that it was this setup. 
Like, there's almost no way you would figure this out otherwise. Should I should I go into another one? Because, I, like I said, I, I'll happily answer questions if you're just... I'm hoping you're not so confused that you don't even know what to ask. There, I definitely have one of these on the test. This is question 7 on the test. This is the y equals ce to the kt problem. Okay, here's a different one. Uh, again, you don't have to write down the multiple choice. Uh, i got to check. So h prime equals 6h of x. So if, if we want to write it down, we can. Right, y prime equals ky, which leads to a general solution of y equals ce to the kt. And, and yes, I know these are x's. Um, I'm just going to be constant. Like I'm, <clears throat> I'm going to be consistent and try to put t so you get used to it. But that's just a variable, so it's so whatever. So we know that k is 6. Okay. And are, are you guys okay with the fact that, you know, h of x and h prime of x is the same thing as y and y prime? Okay. Like, that's, that's where I'm getting k equals 6 from. Okay, and then once we have that, now we're told h of 1 equals 5, so when the variable is 1, the answer is 5. This one's not going to come out super nice. So c is equal to 5 over e to the 6th. And actually, now that I'm writing it like that, um, I should write it as 5e to the negative 6 because I'm pretty sure it's going to combine up there. So if I rewrite the equation with C, and K was positive 6, because these E's are being multiplied, I can add their powers. D. Probably a million times quicker than you were doing it, I'm guessing. <clears throat> if I'm going to guess you did them all the long way, Daniel. How, how are we doing? This This one must have felt like it went okay. I did not see the wide-eyed expression on most that I saw on the first one. Or, I shouldn't say the wide-eyed, the look of fear, panic. Well, I'll put this one up. See if you guys can do it on your own. See if you can just find the answer. i got, I got to get my daughter set up. She's got an appointment at 8. And I hate all these doctor's appointments. They email you the code for the doctor appointment, but
You'll also notice that on the second problem we did, because the, the variable wasn't zero, there ended up being kind of a little bit more work involved. This one, it's a zero, so the answer probably came a lot faster to you. So uh, I immediately see that k is negative 1 because it says negative h of x. So I'm going to write it as y equals c e to the negative 1 times t. And then I'm going to use my point h of 0 equals 12. So 12 is equal to c e to the negative times 0. So c is 12. And then the finalized one would be 12 e to the negative 1 t. 12. There she is. Look at her. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, I don't know. Any, any looks like nobody's had any questions on some of this? So the the next part is the actual word problems. And they're not necessarily any harder. There's just, you know, you've, you've got to read through it and, like, decipher. So that's kind of what's considered harder. So it says the value of a computer. And I have a whole bunch of these. <clears throat> I'm not planning on, like, going to the end of the hour with these. I figured I would just do as many as you felt comfortable, like, until you felt comfortable with them. Um, and, and it probably is going to take you a little bit of time to write them out, too. So I'll, I'll give you a minute or two to write it out. The value of a computer is decreasing at a rate that is proportional to any time the value of the computer at that time. It's a long sentence. That sentence is saying the rate is equal to k times the original, like y equals, y prime equals k y, um, except that it's using v. So the value of a computer decreasing at a rate. All right. Second sentence says computer is worth $850 initially, and it is worth $306 after two years. That sentence gives us two pieces of data for us to be able to figure out C and K. And so that's, that's what I have written in green kind of next to it. Oh, shoot. I'll be right back. Sorry, the doctor called the wrong number. She called mine. Okay. So, this is kind of the important thing that we're working with. For you guys, it's going to be critical that you get that that first sentence specifically tells you to do this. And it obviously can have different words in there because it's not always going to be value. It's not always going to be, you know, I'm not going to say why. Um, but it's somehow going to say it's proportional. The rate of change is proportional to the thing. So that tells us to use this function. Out of the two points, if you have a choice, 
always use time zero if you have a choice. It is a lot easier. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I'm going to put zero in place of time. And I know the value is 850. And then what you're going to see is this goes to zero. That turns to one, so it doesn't show up. And the C value is your initial amount. Now, if you guys remember the PERT formula, like I told you guys, CE to the KT is PERT is a version of it. If you remember, P stands for principal, which is the initial amount of money. So in these CE to the KT formulas, an initial amount is traditionally C. It doesn't have to be if this formula is different, but it almost always will be depending on how it's set up. So I'm going to revise my formula to say 850 E to the KT. And now that I've got a second point, I'm going to use that one in my kind of my revised formula. So the value is $306 after uh, two years. And then I'm going to go through this work to solve for K. Now here's where you end up getting needing a calculator. Um, I'll, let me show you the mistake that a lot of students make. And I'll show you how to not do it. So the first thing I need to do is divide both sides by 850. I was just going to type it on my calculator here, but then I realized it might be helpful if I put the calculator on the screen. So first step is to take 306 divided by 850. Um, I didn't divide it, but I'm going to guess it doesn't work out very nice. And it's probably a decimal. Oh, it's actually not a bad decimal at all. I wasn't expecting that. To solve for k, we have to take the log of both sides. Now, if you remember, when you take the log of e to a power, <clears throat> You know what, I just didn't drink enough caffeine. We are taking the log of both sides, but it's the natural log of both sides. When you do the natural log of e to a power, the power comes in the front as a multiplier, and ln of e is left. ln of e is 1. So that's why you take the log of both sides and solve for the power. So to solve for k, you're going to do ln of 0.36 divided by 2. So ln of 0.36 divided by 2 gives you a random weird decimal. Negative 0.51 is the rounded. Um, negative 0.511, I guess. So if I round to three decimals, that's what I get. So value of the computer is 850 e to the approximately negative 0.511t. So to know how much the computer is worth after five years, the actual answer that we're looking for, I plug in five. And then I type that in my calculator. And I'm going to guess that those answers are rounded to the nearest dollar because I would be shocked if it came out exact. I don't like how they didn't say it was rounded, but... So I got $66 and almost 4 cents. Now here's what I want to show you on the calculator. 
Um, I'm trying to remember how to. Let me pause the recording. Okay, let me share the calculator with you now. This is ridiculously slow to do. Just so you can see the calculator. Okay, so it's probably on your screen. It probably looks really goofy on your <coughs> display is because it's so tall. Um, so I originally did the 306 divided by 850. Okay. So that was 0.36. And then to find the answer, I did ln of 0.36 divided by 2. So ln of 0.36 divided by 2. And like I said, I got a decimal that I rounded. <clears throat> what I want to warn you guys about is way too many students will end up getting questions wrong because they just round it in the problem. So on the screen, I wrote k is approximately negative 0.511. And that's okay to do. But when you go to calculate your final answer, you should not use negative 0.511 because it'll make your answer be off by quite a bit. Um, so what you want to do is you want to learn how to use the store feature on your calculator. So this decimal, the calculator only shows 10 digits, but the decimal goes on for thousands of digits. If I use the store button, which is the one right above on, it's going to store this answer as something. Now, to make it easy on you, we're going to store it as K because it's the K value. So hit alpha K. And then what that's going to do is it's going to store the answer as K. So whenever I type a K from now on, it uses that decimal. So to our final answer, we had to do 850 times e to the, that's not e, e to the k times 5. So instead of me typing the decimal, I'm just going to put k times 5. And now what happened already on this one, when I used negative 0.51, you know, instead of just trying to, I'll just type it in. I originally used negative 0.511. Um, negative 0.511 times 5. You'll see that this isn't even a big answer, but the answers are already 4 or 5 cents off. When you start doing radioactive dating, because we're going to have questions on that, when you start doing radioactive dating, your answer can be off by like hundreds of years just because of the decimal. And it, it seems strange because 0.511 is pretty accurate. Um, but you, you definitely want to learn how to use the store feature on your calculator so that your answers are much more accurate. Okay, uh, I'll get this. Let me get this out of the way. Go ahead and ask, yeah. Oh, that's a good question too. Um, normally you don't have to. I'll put the calculator back up here. Normally you don't have to. Um, if you really wanted to, <clears throat> if you go into the memory, which is second plus, uh, there is all sorts of different things that your calculator stores. I will tell you, me personally, I just wipe the whole calculator repeatedly. <laughs> like, I usually do seven. I just reset the calculator because I don't ever keep anything on my calculator. But you can go into number two, which is memory management. And on memory management, um, there is all sorts of different things that are stored, I think. Well, let's just click on all. Um, so I've got info in all of the L lists, and there is K right there. 
I think I hit enter on it if I remember right. Um, delete? Yeah. So if you want to delete an individual thing, you can do it that way. Otherwise, yeah. for kind of long. Number, numbers. Oh, uh, to do the individual things. Um, memory management number two. And then I, I just, I clicked on all, and then you can scroll through to find the one that you stored. Uh, otherwise, the more common one is number seven, or you can just wipe your calculator. Because a lot of you have things stored in lists. Um, you have things stored in, you know, Y equals, your window table, your window setting might be different. So it's, it's not a terrible idea just to reset your calculator frequently, because then everything's back to default. And it, usually if your calculator is working weird, that's by far the what I recommend to do. Uh, okay, so here's the notes back up. Oh, uh, was everybody okay with this problem? I don't know. I, I didn't get any questions, really. Only got a question on the calculator. Do these problems feel a lot like the ones right before it that we did? If they do, that's that's great. I thought they would feel different. How um, can it be worth eight hundred sixty? It's not worth eight hundred sixty-six. It's worth sixty-six. Wait, did my calculator say eight sixty-six? I didn't even look. Oh, uh, never mind. I reset the calculator. <laughs> I think it was sixty-six. Maybe I said eight hundred sixty-six on accident. Uh, but no, uh, that's, that's great that you're, uh, you know, just kind of mentally estimating what the answer should be, because clearly it should be a lot less than 306. Okay, well, let's, let's do a second problem. How about I do this one with you guys, and then, um, and then I'll have you try the next one on your own. So the number of people using an older version of a spreadsheet program decreases at a rate that is proportional to any time to the number of people still using the version at that time. Ridiculously not good grammar, right? Like, this is pretty rough. Um, this is only written that way so that I immediately know um, the number of people. I guess I'll just use P. So the rate of change of people is proportional to the number of people using it. Very drawn out sentence. There were 10,000 people using the older version of the spreadsheet program when the new version first came out. So that is like the initial value. So at time zero, there were 10,000 people. The number of people still using the older version decreases by 20% every six months. That's actually super annoying because we have to calculate a new point. Okay. How many people are still using the older version of the spreadsheet program after two months? Okay, so it definitely goes by months. I wanted to make, I wanted to find out if it was years or months. Uh, okay, so we have to calculate the second point, which is annoying. It decreases by 20% every six months. So at six months' time, oh, I guess this isn't that bad because it's 10,000. 20% of 10,000 would be 2,000. So at six months' time, there should be 8,000 people using it. Because that's a decrease of 20%. Um, do you guys want me to go over how to calculate 20%? Like 0. 0.2 times 10,000? So I subtracted it. Okay, so population of people using the program. 
C e to the k t. C is 10,000 because that is the initial value. And I have to calculate k. So I'm going to put in 6, 8,000. space. I don't know what ln of point eight is divided by six. So I'm just going to write that. How many people are still using the older version of the spread program after two months? So instead of a T, I would put a 2. <clears throat> what did you get when you typed it in? 92.83? Okay. Anybody know how I knew that answer without even calculating it? I'm going to guess Sydney does. She was good at trying to figure out what did. Yep, go. <laughs> because, yep. <laughs> Why can't it be 58? It's smaller than the 6. <clears throat> uh, pretty much. So we were told that it decreases 20% every 6 months. So at the six month mark, there was 8,000 people using it. And this question said, how many were using it after two months? So the answer should be in between 8,000 and 10,000. So that's kind of how I knew the answer without doing any work. And FYI, if you guys can figure that out on a multiple choice question, uh, let me clarify on the AP test. If you can figure out the answer on the AP test without like doing any work, you can just write it down. On my test, I'm having to write all the work so that I can grade the work. That's how you get partial credit. How did this one go? I, I wanted to try to help you less on this one. That's why I kind of said a lot less. Um, because I want you to try to get to the point where you can feel like you can do it on your own. So were there steps up here that you got confused why I did them? And or... You know, I don't know anything. Go ahead. Oh, Caden, you got a question? Oh. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Do you guys want me to put do you guys want me to put up a question for you to try on your own or do you still want this one up here like are you guys still copying stuff it's always super hard to tell when you're looking at a computer yes yes I see you guys are extremely chatty today If Mr. Sullivan was in there, I would immediately call him up and tell him to make fun of you guys right now. But he's not, so I can't. Okay. During one time period, the price of rhodium increased at a rate that was proportional to the price of rhodium at that time. So there's our key wording that says what type of problem it is. The price for an ounce of rhodium was 475 initially, and it quadrupled every 25 months. What was the price for an ounce of rhodium after 18 months? Now this one I couldn't answer without doing work. I, I only know it's not 175. Because 1048 and 1289 are too close for me to figure out. But I know it's got to be B or C. 
Oh, actually, you know what? I didn't even look to see if there was a choice D on this problem. I probably just screenshotted what fit on the screen. So it's possible there's a choice D. We'll see. Why don't you guys see if you can figure this one out beginning to end? Now, if you're if you're still working, oh god, ha! I was on mute. If you're still working, that's okay. I thought it might be good that we start doing it together now, um, in case you started the problem wrong, because you know then all your work after that would, would not be right. Ethan, can you tell me how you started? I'll just write down what you did. So that immediately says that uh, y is equal to c e to the kt. And I, I put a y, I guess I should write like a p for price or something. I don't know if that matters. Okay. Ethan, can you call on the next person? Okay, Daniel, what did you do next? Why did I write 1900? <laughs> well, then what number, what number did you put in place of P? Okay. No, that's all right. That's all right. Um, Daniel, can you call on the next person? What you said was good. You, so you gave me the C value, which is a good start. Uh, Carson? Carson, where did I get 1900 from? How come I know it's $1,900 after 25 months? Uh, maybe I should just, uh, if you're not sure, that's okay too. Should I just, yeah, I quadrupled. It, it tells you that the price quadrupled every 25 months. And so after 25 months, the price was quadruple. So four times. Did that, did that sentence kind of stump a lot of you? Um, if, if so, what part of this one kind of got you? Is it the word quadrupled? Is that something you really never hear? Yeah, go for it. You can. 
I'm not going to teach it that way, but you can. Because when I divide by four, when I divide by four seventy five, it becomes four. Yeah, um, it it actually doesn't it actually doesn't matter what this was so, to be honest. But yeah, as you do more of these, they start they start. Oh shoot, somebody wrote something. Sorry, maybe that was you. No, oh, okay. <clears throat> um, yes, because this is essentially just like a multiplier. So, um, if you don't know the initial price, it's actually okay. This is how you figure out half life. You don't even you don't even need to know how much there originally was. You can calculate half life info just knowing how long the half life is. Okay, so um, log of both sides, natural log of both sides. Divide by 25. So I get K. I don't know. Is there anybody I haven't called on? You, King? Have I called on you yet? I don't think so. How would I find... Wait, you're not you, King. <laughs> oh, no, that's all right. <clears throat> I was going to say her voice sounds very different. How did you do the last part that said what was the price after 18 months? Okay. Excellent. Uh, what was the answer? I didn't actually calculate it. Did you calculate it either? Oh, I, I, sounds reasonable to me. Did other people get C? It seems correct to me. Okay, we'll go with it. We'll say it's about twelve eighty nine. I didn't plug it in my calculator, but I'm pretty positive it is. How this? Okay, good. Um, so is there a step that you got stuck on trying to do it on your own? Because that's maybe what I would like to try to explain more to you, possibly. Because that, I mean, that'll be key. Like, this is question eight on the test, is a word problem. And it's going to be somewhat similar to one of these. Um, and they're easy once you figure them out, just like every math problem there is. Once you figure them out, they're easy. But getting to that point often requires you to not get stuck on a step. And it, I mean, nobody's asking anything, but like I kind of get the sense that you guys are not doing great on these. Uh, oh, I do have one more. What time is it? 33? Do you guys want to do one more? <laughs> uh, okay, I'll I'll leave it up to you. Okay, I see another no. Okay, that that's fine. Um, like I said, I just I had a bunch of examples and I figured I would just do them as long as you kind of felt comfortable. Um, the homework for today is just the two topics. Um, this doesn't necessarily need to be done tonight. So if you guys saw at the beginning of the hour, <clears throat> um, I'm not, I'm just going to go straight by whatever your Khan Academy score is, but I'm not going to check it until Monday. I mean, like, this was a pretty fast week, and you guys had a lot of different things, so I, I kind of understand that you might not have had time for homework all that time. Um, I, I really can't delay the test. That's what I would if I could have, but I, I really can't delay it just because our time is so crammed. It's just stupid. I mean, like, we're only going to have a little bit of time after unit eight to get ready for the AP test on top of it. Um, so 
we're going to go over the outline together tomorrow in class. I would recommend you take the unit test by tomorrow night because this is a great way to review for the chapter test, like our chapter test. But um, you have until Monday if you want to try to retake things, increase scores, whatever. So I, I would just make sure that you do at least these two things, the differential equation things, tonight. So either way, we've got 15 minutes left. Um, you guys are welcome to stay on and, and ask me anything you want help on. Um, otherwise, you're welcome to, you know, get off Google Meet whenever you want. Appreciate you being here.